In this tutorial, we're going to look at the interaction properties for the Articulate Engage 360 interactions. We'll also look at interaction size and how to modify that, and then how to customize your color themes. So if you go up to the top of the interaction, if you go up to the top of the ribbon, you'll see your interaction properties. Click on that, and it opens up three tabs. You've got your playback tab, colors and effects, and quality. Now, regardless of the interaction type that you choose, you'll always have these three tabs. But sometimes you'll have a fourth tab where you have properties unique to an interaction. So for example, here's the tabbed image interaction. And I have the option when I go to interaction properties to modify the tabbed image. So you see there's a fourth tab here. And then here I can change some of the properties for the tabbed image interaction. So some interactions will have that fourth tab where they have property settings unique to the interaction. But all of the interactions will have these three tabs here. Now let's take a closer look at interaction properties. In the Playback tab, you have three options. One is interactive, where the user can click around. The other is linear, and this is where, let's say you create a process interaction and you want the people to go through the interaction in a specific order. You can assign that here with the linear. Or you can have the interaction play by itself in presentation mode and then set the timing here. In Colors and Effects, you can choose a theme color. If you create your own theme color, it'll show up in here. But we have some default colors that you can choose from. And then you have Header Type option. By default, Articulate Engage has a dark header. And that will display your interaction title. Uh, you have the option of having a dark header or a light header. Or you can have no header. Now if you choose none, that means the interaction title also won't display. And then down here you have some other options like animations. I kind of like the fade animation. The fade animation is a little bit more subtle. Uh, but these are just subjective things and, and based on your preference. Uh, media border, when you insert an object or a picture, uh, you'll have uh, no border. But you can choose rounded corners or a drop shadow. And then you have sound effects. By default you have this clicking sound effect. Uh, a lot of people after three or four clicks, they kind of get annoyed by the sound effects. So that's something to consider. So you can always turn those off right here. And down here you can set your interaction fonts, the title and the content font. Now, When you look at the Quality tab, this is where you can modify the compression settings when you publish the course. Usually the standard is fine, but sometimes you may work in a high bandwidth environment or low bandwidth environment. So that means you can increase your settings if you're in a high bandwidth environment and make your video and image quality and everything higher. But that's also going to increase your file size. Uh, but if you work in a low bandwidth environment where streaming content may be a challenge, then you can set all your settings lower and that'll also decrease the file size. Usually what I tell people if that's something they're considering, publish the interaction at the highest setting and then publish the interaction at the lowest setting and then put it on the network. And then you can, one, as you can see what the difference is, you may find that the lower setting's okay. Uh, there will be a little bit of degradation in quality, but that's because you're setting it lower. And then you can also see if the higher setting uh, has any impact on streaming. And then here you can optimize uh, your audio volume. So that's basically it when you're working with the interaction properties. If you want to change your interaction size, and that's usually something you want to consider at the beginning of your development, just go to the interaction size and you can see you have some options. You can do 4x3 will be the default. You can also choose a 16.9, which is kind of a standard as well. Or you can create custom like I did here. And with the custom, I actually created a square looking interaction. Uh, so you have some freedom to modify that. And then the last thing I want to show is how to change your theme colors. So if you go up to Colors here, click on that. You can see you've got your default colors. But you can also create custom theme colors. And that's where you may want to incorporate some branding or things into that. So you can see here's the default setting. So I've got my background here. I've got my header and then content and all of this. And then here it's just a matter of changing those things. And you can I see it's pretty straightforward. So for example, if I want to change the background, I can just choose another color and it'll adjust the preview and then I can see what it looks like in that background. So a lot of things you can do there. If you're not quite sure, I always just change everything to yellow and see what changes and then I'll know, okay, this is what I can modify on this interaction. 
So that's basically it. So when you're working with the interaction properties, you have some property controls. You can change your interaction size, and then you can also customize uh, theme colors to work with your branding. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to jump in the community and ask. We're always there to help you. And then watch the other tutorials to learn more about Articulate Engage.